Welcome to the Divine Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Roche, and together we are walking the path of discovering your true self and the alignment with your soul. Through these conversations, you will experience a deeper level of connection with yourself and the universe, and most importantly, you will trust in your spiritual journey ahead. Let's begin. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Divine Connection Podcast. Today, we are diving into the topic around spirit guides, personal angels, universal angels, and how to know when and how to call on each of those different types of beings. This was inspired by a question that was submitted. And so the question says, guardian angels are part of your spirit team, but how can you become more familiar with your spirit team members, their signs and symbols, and how to discern when you should call on them versus calling on general angels or beings that are for everyone? So I love this because it's so true. Like there is so much energetic, so so much spiritual support that exists that can sometimes feel a little bit confusing or just maybe even overwhelming. Like, when do I call on this angel? When do I call on the spirit guide? When do I call on this one? Like, what do I do? How do I get to know the, these parts of my spirit team better? Like, there's so much that's that's going on all at the same time. So the first thing that I'll say, the way that I see this when it comes to spirit guides, just for ever, anyone who's listening and is curious what, you know, what I define as a spirit guide versus a guardian angel versus general or universal angels. So let me just kind of break it down a little bit so that you understand where my perspective is coming from. So first of all, there's two types of angelic beings that exist. There's the personal angels, which are personal to you, meaning that they are here for you like guardian angels. You meet your garden angel, you're not going to find information online about your garden angel because your garden angel is yours. No one else has met your garden angel unless you're obviously working with a angel channel who is connecting with that angel for your benefit. And so that angel is for you. That's a personal angel. Guardian angels are a great example. And there's other types like seraphim, for example. So that's that. The other side of it is universal angels. And this see, these are the types of angels that anyone can call on at any time. And they are there to support us, such as archangels or the Herschel angels. These angels, they're for everyone. They work for the collective. And so it doesn't matter how many people or where in the world people are calling upon the angels, angels are energy. And so they can support us all at the same, at the same time because they are not bound by space or time. So that's how I see the difference between personal angels and universal angels. Now, when it comes to spirit guides, I see them in the same kind of category as personal angels, where your spirit guides are specific to you. They're your spirit guides, or they're here to support you. And then other beings that might be helpful, such as ascended masters, are more like universal angels are kind of in that same category where they work for the collective. So when it comes to learning more about your spirit team as a, as a whole, which would be more in the, in the, in the realms of your personal guides and your personal angels, it's very similar as to getting to know your garden angels, for example, where you connect with them with, within your energy field, they are the closest to you. You can pray or ask for a message or a sign from them. So for example, you could say, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to learn more about my spirit team. Show me a sign, show me a message, show me a name so that I know who you are. And if you already know your garden angels and you can use them as the support, like lean into them to help you when it comes to learning more about your spirit guides. And it would simply be a process where you are, let's say, you know, get, having one step forward for you and you're learning more about them, asking them questions. I always say, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. And if you're not sure 
about a uh, answer or about a particular energy, then lean into an angelic being that you feel safe and comfortable with, such as your garden angels or Archangel Michael, for example, that kind of a thing. So you're using familiar beings that you are already familiar with as your kind of like checkpoint <laughs> or like your base to then support you with learning about other spirit guides that might be around you that are also supporting you. Now, one thing that I do want to bring your attention to and make sure that you are aware of is being aware of integrity. The thing about spirit guides and beings that are not of the angelic frequency is that they may not necessarily always have your best interest at heart, which I hate to say that, but it's true. We have to remember that spirit guides, they have a different vibrational energy. And so they might not have the highest integrity. So when you are connecting with spirit guides, the first thing that you want to do is ask about their integrity level. And this is one of the things that they cannot lie to you about. Like they can't be deceiving in that way. They can't say, yeah, I'm integrity level 10 out of 10. And, and then like, you know, actually be a one. Um, energy is energy is energy, which means that energy cannot lie. So if you are looking directly at the energy of integrity, then you're going to know what the integrity level is of that specific spirit guide. And the thing with spirit guides is that they, like I said, they're, they're a different frequency. They're not the same frequency as angels. Angels don't have egos. Spirit guides can still have egos. And so the, the spirit, spiritual guides, they, like I said, there's a whole range, like a whole spectrum. Some spirit guides, of course, I would say probably 60 or 70% of them are, of course, there to support for the collective good. But there's still quite a bit of them that are not necessarily, they might not be the worst integrity, but they might just have a personal kind of agenda to kind of thing going on or not really aware or just misinformed or just, you know, just not having that full awareness of the greater divine plan as angels have, how they're connected. I do believe that angelic beings are direct messengers from God and therefore they have a different perspective and a different awareness, a different frequency when it comes to our divine highest good. And so that's the thing that we have to remember when it comes to spirit guides is that they have different integrity levels. And if you have a spirit guide around you that is not a high integrity level, you can fire that spirit guide. You can say, see ya. You're not in integrity with who I am and what I desire to move into. So you're fired. <laughs> like, bye, you know, and, and being able to support yourself in that way. So when you are diving into that exploration, that's something that's important for you to just be aware of is integrity levels, something that I talk a lot about inside of the healer program, which is my big signature program for healers to develop your ability and your connection and your path as a healer. And so that's one of the things that I teach my healers is we have to be aware of integrity when we're working with energy, when we're working with spirits and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So Go, moving on with the same conversation around integrity, you can see how now the beings such as ascended masters or archangels who are universal beings, they are of the highest integrity because they're working for the collective. They are supporting the collective evolution. They are supporting the bigger divine plan. So when we're looking at uh, universal beings, they have a more fixed in quotes, they have a more fixed direct uh, path that they're leading us towards because it's part of the greater divine plan. So they have a, a more zoomed out perspective of where this is all going and what the divine has in store for us and what the divine would have us 
do to live in our purpose and to live in connection with that divine love and how we are meant to show up in the energy of that divine love. So there's more, there's, there's less leeway in a way, you know, there's less like, Oh, we can go this way or that way. It's just like, this is the divine plan. This is the alignment with divine love. This is where we need to go as a collective. And that's where those universal beings are directing us towards there. Um, and like I said, personal guides, might not be aware of that or they just might have their own whatever integrity that is in in alignment fully in, in alignment with that simply because they're still going through their own soul process their own soul work their own growth their own spiritual expansion and awareness so that's the thing to be aware of with regards to that and so when it comes to knowing like when should i call on my personal angels or guides, when should I call on universal angels or guides? It's really dependent on, first of all, who you feel most resonant with or where you feel most connected. So some people feel most connected to the Herschel angels. Other people feel most connected to their guardian angels. Other ones feel more connected to their, um, dragon guides, for example, or whatever other frequency in terms of their spirit guides. So it really just depends on where you feel most drawn towards and then filtering, filtering it out through integrity level. And then just know, also understanding why you are calling on them and what you are asking for guidance on and what you're asking support with and, and, and how you're working with them. And understanding that the most important thing when it comes to your path is, is the relationship between you and the divine. So you and God, you and source, whatever you want to call it, you and that energy is the most important. That connection is the most important. And then understanding that the other spiritual energies are simply supporting whatever that main connection is guiding you into and calling you into. And so I don't see our personal guides or angels or even universal as the ones that we call on to be like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> kind of a thing. But, or like, what's my next step or what's my purpose or this? It's more so an energy of I'm moving into this. So I'm just asking, I'm like leaning into as a friend or as a mentor, someone who's there guiding me and, and helping to bring through the energy that I desire to lean into. So for example, if I'm really struggling with having the courage to take a next step, then I might call on Archangel Michael and be like, Archangel Michael, I really need courage right now. I need your help. Please support me and help to bring in courage to support me as I take this next step. So it's, it, you see the difference. It's not like, okay, Archangel Michael, what's my next step right now? What should I be doing? It's more so a, I know that this is my next step, but I need courage right now and I'm having a hard time. So please help me with that. And, and that kind of a thing, or, you know, I'm having a really hard time having an open heart and let, letting love in. So Archangel Raphael, can you please show me and reveal to me what I need to know to be able to heal that or to, um, or to bring healing into my heart so that I can be more open or whatever, like that kind of a thing. So that's, that would be how I would discern for some people they, their personal angel or guides have a specific purpose. So let's say, for example, you have an angel or guide who is specifically there to support you with your book writing or who is specifically there to support you with your public speaking or whatever other thing you might think of or that you know about that they are there specific for that purpose. So when you are working on that specific thing, then yeah, call on those personal angels or guides to support you with that. The other thing that, like I said, I do garden angel readings all the time and they, the garden angels that come forward for people always have a specific purpose or a specific way that they are supporting that person. And so you would lean into your garden angels when it comes to that time. And then you might lean into the archangels when there's a more general thing that you need support with. So again, it's very just uh, dependent on what the particular situation is. Uh, but the most important thing that you could follow is where you feel called to go and like where you feel drawn. 
I've had experiences in the past, like way back, you know, when I first started this in 2017, where, you know, I had a session with someone and they introduced me to some particular spirit guides. And it was like, okay, cool. These spirit guides, you know, I think one of them even was named Laura or something. I don't remember, but it was like this specific information. And maybe I I called upon them a few times, but then it just didn't feel as resonant. It doesn't, didn't feel as connected. I still found myself calling on the angels. Like that was the place where I went, like angels that, and I was just where I was drawn towards. So it's, it's always about what you feel most drawn towards for first and foremost above anything else and trusting in your intuition and trusting what you feel and allowing the relationship between you and the the divine to be the, at the core, at the center of it. And then from there you expand out into whatever spirit team, whatever divine spiritual beings you feel pulled towards. You might also have an experience like a session or with you meet someone or maybe you pull a oracle card that brings through a specific being that might just be there for that particular time to support you with that specific message and then they move on so it's so different and so dependent but but I hope that that gives you uh at least some sort of a guideline to help you with knowing when you might call on which divine being now For those of you who are wanting to have a more direct guided path where you're like, okay, I know this, this angelic being, I know this angelic being, I know this is the guy that's coming through. And you kind of like feel that you're not just randomly guessing or you're not just randomly like putting things, things together. Like I felt this here and that happened there. And I had this meditation and this is what I received. And I don't have anyone to talk about it with, but I'm just going to keep going and do this and do that. I have a space for you. This is for anyone who's wanting to be in community with other people, like-minded individuals who are on a spiritual path, who are deepening their spiritual connection, who are learning more about what it means to work with the angels, what it means to work with the divine beings that are around us and to support you on your path. This is called the Angels Guild. And I'm so excited to invite you into this space because the Angels Guild is truly like such a safe and supportive energy for anyone who is on the spiritual path, who desires to grow, who desires to learn, who desires to be guided. And this is all of these elements are so beautifully fit together inside of this space where you have the trainings, the deep dive trainings, where we're talking about a specific angelic topic for you to explore, for you to learn about, for you to practice. There's the guided meditations part, which is a a whole uh, section where you are receiving that direct connection, that direct energetic support. And then there's the ask the angels Q and a, which is all about receiving guidance, all about answering your questions, all about giving you the tools and the steps and the knowing and the validation and everything that you need to support you direct messages from the angels to help you on your path. This is all included inside of the angels guild, which I'm so excited to share with you. So this is a membership based space, meaning that you can sign up monthly and come into the space for as long as you need to. And then if you if you feel complete, you're complete or continue and build and grow with the community for as long as you'd like. And it's such a beautiful space. Of course, if you sign up for the full year, you have special bonuses that are included. But regardless, I'm inviting you to come join me inside of the Angels Guild if you are wanting to deepen your connection to the divine, to the angels, to yourself, and to be guided along the way. So the Angels Guild, all of the information for that is in the description inside of the show notes below this episode. So go check it out and come join me inside of the Angels Guild. That is it for today's episode. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up or rate it, review it wherever you're watching or listening, tuning in. I am so grateful for you to be here. All of that helps to make sure that this podcast reaches people that it is meant to reach. Please, please, please feel free to share this episode with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and make sure that you are subscribed or following this podcast, depending on if you're watching me 
on YouTube or listening on a podcast platform. But whatever it is, make sure that you are tuned in so that you receive notifications every single week when we have a new episode. That is it for today. Thank you for joining in. As always, I am sending you so much love and angel blessings, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. And if you want to learn more about the Divine Connection podcast, you can go to christinaaroche.com forward slash podcast and learn about how you can be featured on the show. 